what did I learn from my negotiation today? What did I do well that worked, but did not work? What would I do differently next time? So that, because, you know, sometimes people say, well, I've had 30 years of experience negotiation, but it's actually, they've had one year of experience that they repeated 30 times. Olá amigos, aqui é José Salib Neto, da Gestão da Manhã, um prazer estar com vocês novamente aqui apresentando o, o William Urey, que é talvez a maior a, a autoridade em negociação é, do mundo inteiro, né? seus livros venderam milhões de cópias, né? Getting to Yes, Getting Past No, tantas outras cópias, uma pessoa que é, usa grande parte do seu tempo para ajudar na paz do mundo, a resolução de conflitos, de, de lugares que, não, que às vezes não tem jeito, né? E é muito bacana poder conversar com ele para ver o que, que ele está fazendo esses dias, é, é, principalmente nesse mundo que ficou meio meio torto né? com, a, com o Covid, né? Que está todo mundo, ninguém está ninguém acostumado a viver com esse mundo. Imagina as pessoas negociando dentro desse cenário. Então, a gente vai trazer aí algumas perspectivas é, do, do, do Bill, como eu chamo. O Bill agora está numa montanha lá no Colorado. É, ele está num retreat dele, tem muita neve em volta. Talvez fale um pouquinho, mas vocês vão perceber que está tudo bem. Bill, uh, so wonderful to have you here. Appreciate it, uh, your, your time with our community. That's right. And uh, in, in the business world also, we got uh, a lot of... Um, a very different scenario now that we don't see each other anymore. We're here on video. And uh, how does that affect the negotiation? Uh, because a lot of people have to negotiate, to, you know, not uh, in, in presence anymore, but digitally, you know. So what's your, yeah. I see more and more, you know, people have with their suppliers and their customers and the government. And so what, what's your recommendation for people to negotiate better? <laughs> Well, it's good. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's now a new specialty, Zoom negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> Are negotiating by, you know, by, by video. You're, as in any kind of negotiation, is building trust, confianza. Um, it's not so easy to build trust by Zoom, you know. Uh, you know, so it's, uh, so we need to really be creative and think about how we do this and understand, you know, it used to be like in businesses, a lot of the good the conversations, important conversations happened around the coffee machine or the water cooler, you know, that kind of, and we don't have that anymore. So we have to build that in um, and really think intentionally of how we cultivate our relationships and maintain our relationships in order to be able then to negotiate delicate subjects when we're not in person. Because normally speaking, I, I used to, you know, advise people, <laughs> Do not negotiate by email. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> it's a, you know, anything sensitive gets distorted. The context is not there, whatever. Pick up the phone, call the person, or, you know, much better meet them for this challenge. And, uh, and so we're having to reinvent the way in which we negotiate. And yes, I do think that there's some advantages too. If we actually use the potential of the technology, there's some advantages. For one thing, we have more time you know, because we're not commuting, <laughs> spending an hour in traffic each way. We're, mm -hmm. we're, you know, we can be more efficient with our, with our time, but we need to take that time and invest it in building relationships. What do we have to be careful about when having a major negotiation through Zoom? <laughs> well, for, first of all, I think it just requires more attention. Well, for one thing, you know, people record. <laughs> you know, it used to be, you know, right now we're recording this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 you don't feel quite so private to be able to discuss things and you so so you need to establish that's why trust is so important establish ground rules of confidentiality what happens to things and so on another is uh is we need to you know it used to be like in the old days you used to have long meetings you know uh you know sometimes negotiations would go on for hours and hours and hours and hours People on Zoom, they get tired. We need to think about chunking it and doing it differently. Maybe meeting for 30 minutes and then taking a break. In other words, imagine that negotiation is a play. Your mind goes to a mental and emotional balcony overlooking the play, a place where you can stay calm, 
remember what you really want, what your prize is in this negotiation, what, what are your core interests, and zoom out and see, get the larger perspective. And so we may have to like have a different rhythm in our negotiations of meet, break, meet, break, meet, break, meet, balcony. Mm -hmm. you know, be on the stage in the play, then go to the balcony. And, and so I think we need to think, we need to be creative and think about how to be most effective in doing these things. What is the the uh, the rules that that of negotiation that will never change? Well, I think the basic principles never change, which are one is pay attention to the people. <laughs> you know, you know, mm -hmm. listen. You know, the cheapest concession you can make in negotiation is to listen to the other, put yourself in their shoes. You're trying to influence them in your negotiation, so you have to. You know, you have to know where their mind is. You have to know what they what they think. And uh, listening is also key for building respect. So that's not going to change. What are they really concerned about? You know, is it quality of the service, quality of the product? Is it the long term relationship? Is it is it having a reliable supply in a time of COVID? What what are their real concerns? And then trying to find a way to meet their concerns that at the same time meets your interests. You know, those things are, they're, those things are, the, the, the principles, like the principles in getting to yes or in getting past no are always going to, they're, 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 they're timeless principles. How we apply them in an age of technology, in an age of Zoom and, and all kinds of other platforms that we use for. Yeah. Sometimes we have to negotiate without even talking to other people, you know, just uh, typing, you know, so it's, uh, it's quite uh, Quite, quite a uh, challenge. And, and Bill, what, what do your advice for people, um, for managers in general, how to update their skills on negotiation in addition to read your books, and which are still the best ones that we can find? <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you for the compliment. The, the, uh, I would say the, the best way is, um, is every day we negotiate. You know, if you're a middle manager, you're negotiating every single day. You're negotiating with customers, you're negotiating with vendors, you're negotiating with your employees. You have so much experience to learn from if you bring a lens of learning and saying, okay, uh, let me just reflect every day or every week. What did I learn from my negotiations today? What did I do well that worked, but did not work? What would I do differently next time? So I think bringing a learning prism a rich experience so that because you know sometimes people say well i've had 30 years of experience negotiation but it's actually they've had one year of experience that they've repeated 30 times what what do i need what do i personally need to work on do i need to work more on listening do i need to work more on uh on um, on how do i take a, a rather difficult situation and look create value can i be more you know mad you know work on creativity and imagination do i need to work on saying no better because a lot of us, as I noticed from giving books in Brazil, have a lot of challenge saying no. And you have challenge saying no to customers. <laughs> you know, the, customers are always saying, hey, give me a better price or give me a customized product. We need to learn how to say no. So those kinds of things with a coach, you can improve your ability to negotiate better and better. Bill, to, to finalize here, the golden question on how we have, we, we live in a such a tight economy where things got scarce, you know, a few companies, businesses are doing better because of the COVID, but in general, it's not the, the, the case. So people are really trying to, you know, squeeze something. It's becoming really a bargaining <laughs> battle. So what, uh, how do you see where, you, you know, if you take a position of a company that your customers and your partners want to squeeze stuff out of you that uh, will make it di difficult to operate. Yeah, well, for one thing, it's true. Um, there's a lot of uh, pressure. It's not just about expanding the pie, about how do we divide up the pie and they want more back, you know, they want prices, they, so on. So you're feeling a lot of pressure. So to me, it, in those kind of situations, it's more and more incumbent to pull back from the situation because we get stressed, we get reactive. And when we're reactive, we either might get we might give to the customer when we shouldn't give in, or we get angry, which also doesn't help the relationship. Think about what is my BATNA? <laughs> what, 
My mm -hmm. bat knife, remember, is your best alternative to a negotiation. From a balcony perspective, think about what your objectives are. You know, got to stay afloat. You got to survive. You got to make a profit. Take care of your employees. Whatever you know, your your objectives are. Really think them through, and then ask yourself the question: What if I cannot make an agreement with that customer who's always asking me to lower my prices? What if? What's my alternative? What am I? What's my plan B? What if? What am I going to do to satisfy my interest of keeping my company afloat, keeping a profit, paying the bills if I don't have this customer? Oh, and then you really think about that. You say, well, could there be other customers? Could I open up another thing? Could I, you know, uh, what do I need to do to improve my alternative, my BATNA, my which stands for best alternative to a negotiated agreement, my BATNA, because if you have, if you've improved your BATNA strategically, that's going to, that BATNA is the key to power. That will equalize the power with your customer who may be more powerful than you. And so I think in, these, in this day and age, with all this pressure, we need to think more and more strategically about our BATNA before we engage in the negotiation, not just when the agreement has broken and then we think about our alternative but before strategically, because there are things you can do strategically to improve your BATNA that will put you in a better position when it comes to negotiating and more likely to reach a good agreement that's good for you as well as addresses your client's concerns. That's wonderful, Bill. Such a, an amazing course in just a few minutes <laughs> on negotiation. Well, th thank you so much for this uh, wonderful interview. Pre really appreciate that. So it's uh, very, very nice. nice.